Joining us now is author of Hold Texas, Hold the Nation, Victory or Death, Fox News contributor, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, former congressman. Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce joins us and attorney Danielle McLaughlin. Good to have you all. Uh, Congressman, let me begin with you. Uh, Five years ago, the entire Democratic Senate caucus voted for a barrier. Uh, Back in 2006, they voted for the Secure Fence Act that included Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, the whole gang. Now, all of a sudden, they're against it. It, it, That's only because Trump is for it, right? Well, without a doubt, and when you hear Senator Schumer saying President Trump is not going to get his wall, this is not about (laughs) President Trump or his personality. This is about the constitutional duty and responsibility of the United States elected officials there in the House and the Senate. And that constitutional responsibility is to protect the sovereignty of the United States of America and make sure that the American citizens are secure. Article uh, 4, Section 4 talks about this. The Founding Fathers put it in there. Now, when you talk about a border security wall, no one is talking about 17 hundred miles of a continuous wall, of course but we're talking about a place where you can have an obstacle, an obstruction along some of these routinely used uh, infiltration corridors right. that the drug cartels and others are using to include Islamic jihadists to come into the United States of America. But Tammy, it's all about um, Trump. They, they just, you know, he could say Christmas presents for all and the Democrats would oppose it because It's Donald Trump. Well, yes, but in this particular instance, it's worth opposing because he'll actually get it done. Uh, We have Congress voting for these kinds of things all the time, and it never happens. It was promised to President Reagan. They thought they were going to have a wall and serious border security back, of course, in the 80s and even prior to that. Uh, And this is a president who actually can't be controlled in that he can't be stopped from getting things done. And this is, I think, his primary threat. Uh, What we do know, of course, is, is that what we've seen in the last two years is the Democrats became a party of bullies, chasing around the GOP women, uh, harassing people in public. Uh, and now we're seeing this happen, this kind of approach as I think you're going to be seeing in office as well. We saw it with Representative Guterres uh, attacking uh, Secretary Nielsen uh, for six minutes at a hearing. And then he walked out. And then when she's about to respond, he walks out. Right. Uh, so, uh, so look, this is what the American people, I want them to see it for the next two years. But we also know that this can't be a game. It's been a game for too long for Washington. Uh, the pres- this is, I think, in some ways w- w- what the founders wanted, a man of action or a person of action in the White House to move Congress into getting things done. Right. Uh, and at this point, I think the Congress should remember what their job is, uh, why the president was elected in a Harvard-Harris poll saying 80 percent of Americans want a secure border. Uh, and, of course, a barrier is going to have to be a part of it. You know, Danielle, I think most Americans, frankly, they care about the wall. Many do. But I don't think they care if the government shuts down because it doesn't affect them. There have been 18 government shutdowns since 1976. Um, TSA continues on the post office, your Social Security checks, Medicare, Medicaid, all unaffected. You know, you're still going to get frisked at the airport and the VA, you know, hospital isn't going to pull the plug. So it doesn't affect most Americans when the government shuts down at midnight tonight. No, it doesn't. It does affect about 800,000 federal employees who are either going to be furloughed or are not going to be able to yeah, be but they're non-essential the employees, no, which invites exactly the right. question, why does the government employ non-essential well, workers? Well, one example is the Department of Justice. You keep the criminal folks on and you take the civil people off. But I would still argue that enforcing our civil laws and making sure that penalties are paid is still an important function of government. Right. And at the same time, uh, most Americans, of course, uh, if not all of them, won't notice that it's shut down. But what strikes me is this this obsession by the government about itself. That is the scariest thing for them, that people will have a few days off during the holiday. They will still get paid a few days late. It's not like they won't get paid uh, because Americans know what it's like to be furloughed for years and to never get a paycheck because of what uh, Washington, D.C. has done with policies, what the Obama administration did to the economy of this country. But when it comes down to this, it's like the scary monster of a government shutdown. It really isn't scary at all. As a matter of fact, also the markets respond well when the government right. shuts down. Congressman, what about that? I mean, I, I think that but for the hair on fire media hysteria, mm-hmm. oh, you know, the earth will stop spinning on its axis if the government shuts down at midnight. Uh, most Americans would yawn. 
Well, there really, as you said, Greg, there really is no effect on the everyday average American. As a matter of fact, you brought up an incredible point. Why does the federal government hire people that it has in non-essential positions? So this, and of course, uh, when this uh, quote-unquote shutdown is over, they will be given the back pay. So this is a very important thing to look at the effectiveness and the efficiency of the federal government. Right. I think another thing that is very disingenuous is that you here you have people talking about Medicare for All, which has a $32 trillion price tag, but yet in a $4.4 trillion budget, we can't find $5.7 billion to ensure that we have security along our southern border. Yeah. To me, that's truly disingenuous. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is absurd when you think of it. In the competitive marketplace, no small business or corporation, uh, Danielle, would hire somebody who is not essential. They hire only vital workers uh, because their goal is to increase profits. And, and yet the government, Sorry. the most inefficient disorganization in the world, hires a load of non-essential workers. Well, I mean, you're not suggesting that the civil division of the Department of Justice is non-essential. I'm I mean, not I, a fan I, I, yeah. of the Department of Justice, <laughs> so I would disassemble well, I, I think the that, Department of Justice. I think that there are many important things that the, the DOJ does from a civil perspective, not le least of which is consumer protection, making sure that student loans people don't get ripped off. There's all sorts of things that we have lawyers and other people doing really important things for the American people. Yes, I they, don't think 800,000 people are They seize assets and levy penalties is one of the things they do. Why not use the 14 billion they seized from El Chapo, the Mexican uh, drug cartel kingpin, uh, and use just a portion of that to pay well, for the Well, we, just as remember when we think about money and, and who we're hiring and what we're paying for, uh, remember the billions that were lost in the State Department when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. Uh, the 700 billion. I think million, maybe it's billion, uh, in the Pentagon that can't be found. Right. Uh, the, the amount of money, because it's, the government is so large, it becomes like water. Right. And it just, it, you, we just, you just lose yeah, $200 it. Two hundred dollar toilet so seats. So you know, why, that's really. I mean, like, who has it? So why $200? are we spending five billion on a wall when we could do this with drones? We could do this with personnel. Actually, create employment on the southern border with new technology. Democrats are not about open borders. They care about sovereignty. They care about using money wisely. So if we're concerned about eight hundred thousand people and whether that's government waste or not, then why aren't we thinking that whether this is really actually a big white elephant that's going to get mired in lawsuits over an eminent domain for years, cost the money the, the government far more money as it relates but to Danielle, lawsuits? But Danielle, we do know where, the, and, where and, there and is walls. We do already have sections of walls across the border. We do. Since the 90s, saying, yes. and where those walls exist, at least 95% of illegal traffic ended. And right. that includes illegal aliens and drug traffic. So we have the proof in the history along our own border where the segments of walls uh, exist, and again, starting in the 90s. So it's been consistent historically Congressman over the decades. Congressman West, let me come back yeah. full circle to my original question. Um, mm -hmm. Democrats have long argued for a barrier on the southern uh, border. And yet now they're flip-flopping. Would you agree that the only reason is they don't want to give Donald Trump a political victory because he promised the wall? Yeah, you're absolutely right. This is not about President Trump, although Senator Schumer says that. Ask the Israelis who built the wall, what did that do for stemming terrorism uh, when they had those first and second intifadas? When you look at... Uh, proven, as uh, Tammy has talked about, there are direct results from having a border obstacle down there along our southern border. And I know that Danielle talked about drones and other things. You can use the drones. You can use people on the ground. But the purpose of a wall is to canalize or channel people into areas where you do have those additional resources. We just found out this past week that we had an infiltration tunnel that was being built and, and almost completed along our southern border. We have a very right. serious problem, and uh, we have to rectify it. All right. Uh, Congressman West, always great to see you. Tammy, Danielle, Merry Christmas. thanks for being here. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. Happy